Bring on the Cats. Almost on the brink of losing their entire football program, Bill Snyder was the architect of one of the greatest turnarounds in college football history. In came the climate era after riding high with North Dakota State. K-State led by up-and-coming star Avery Johnson are the Pop-Tart champions of the world after defeating NC State for the inaugural Pop-Tart Bowl. So you might be wondering with a Pop-Tart trophy in hand, what's left? What rebuild is needed, right? Wrong. I'm gonna make my experience rebuilding my alma mater a little bit more challenging over the next five years. KSU. And no, not Kansas State. It also stands for Kennesaw State. In this rebuild for the first year, we're swapping our receiver room with Kennesaw State, and their guys are gonna take over. Canarado. We can only recruit from Kansas or Colorado. Sunflowers shut down. K State is striving to be flawless in this rebuild against KU in their rivalry game. How many games will we be able to jump in and participate during this full rebuild? The wheel has spoken six games. We have to be strategic in how we do this. With that, I'm going to hand it over to the reporter of the show, Bobby Bubbles, to give us the scouting report on Kansas State. Hey, I appreciate that, King Sponge. K-State is a roster here loaded with strength, but there are also a couple glaring weaknesses that need to be addressed. Let's start with the strengths. Look no further than young quarterback Avery Johnson to blossom this year and carry the Cats for the years to come. That one-two punch, DJ Giddens, overlook him at your own risk. The Cats boast an experienced defense led by guys like Austin Moore and Desmond Purnell. Between the two of them, they have 244 career tackles. That's a lot of bodies. Not to mention the secondary is practically intact with a bunch of returning starters. Now you might be asking what needs to be addressed. It all starts with these Kennesaw State receivers. Man, who brought these guys in town? The offensive line will be tested as four starters have left, including a couple to the NFL like Cooper Beebe. So if the Cats can successfully recruit from Canarado and and keep Lil Bro KU down, we should see promising results and early. And the work starts today in year one. Avery Johnson is taking over only one start under his belt, and that was the Pop Tar Bolt victory. We're starting the drive on defense, and it's gonna take a miracle for this FCS opponent to do anything this year. And wow. That was almost intercepted on the first play. This is definitely going to be an interesting rebuild because K-State is good enough to compete most every year. However, there are just gaps across the team that'll hit us at different times. Like right now it's O-line, but next year it could be the secondary. So we got to stay vigilant. And our first first down goes to none other than Christian Moss, the Virginia Tech transfer to Kennesaw State. With Colin Klein departed to Texas A&M, the new offensive coordinator is definitely going to look for ways to get dual threat Avery Johnson involved. And he picks up the first right here. I look across the line and see our friend Oakley, but everyone else is a Kennesaw State receiver, so I'm hoping they can come through today. And forget today against the FCS opponent. He's going to need them all year long. Need pay dirt here on our first drive of the season? I think so. No doubt about that run. Quickly down 7-0 in this one. That is exactly what these guys didn't want to see happen, and now it's fourth. The ball coming back to Avery Johnson and the Cats. Why not open up the second quarter with a little touchdown strike from Avery Johnson to Swanson. That is our swan song. And let's get it. Up two touchdowns. If we're being realistic, this is probably going to be the most success we have all season long as it doesn't get easier from here. Third and short. Will the defense guess correctly? Not at all, leaving a gaping hole for Giddens. You just can't leave a hole open like that for guys like Giddens. He's definitely going to pound that thing. Hey, so yep. far, so good in the initial test. Lob him one up. We've got Christian Moss in the end zone. Kennesaw State receivers producing. Avery Johnson look and fly. Nothing like the sights, smells, and sound of the first game of the season and Handy's getting them into the red zone. What I love about facing a bottom tier team in week one is it's just a good confidence booster. And what I love even more is all the innovations K-State has made over the year to the stadium will be reflected in the new game. Our friends from the FCS here are trying to get some points before the half, and Watson's going to do it. And I guess Avery Johnson went down on that last one, so Jake Rubley comes in and throws a ball to DJ Giddens across the middle. With six seconds left, we'll go ahead and attempt a field goal. It's 52 yards. It hooks left, and Washington is going to return this one out of their end zone. And are you kidding me? Someone make a play. Washington down the sideline past the 40 the 30 the 20 it's a kick six in week one of the dynasty rebuild by an fcs school 
you're out of your mind. And now Avery Johnson is gonna look to do the rest here, just rumbling down the sideline. It's a big touchdown. With the locks in all, even if NCAA 14 doesn't show it, he was gliding. Avery Johnson with a good first game under his belt, over 200 yards passing and a 50 yard rushing day as well. And now three minutes to go. Giddens looking to put on some finishing touches, spin move and all. Big touchdown for Mr. DJ. There you have it. We go on to win week one as we should. Avery Johnson, player of the game, like I said, did what he had to do and we put up 44 points. That's encouraging. Most encouraging of all, we survived the kick six and now can get a good laugh out of it. Way too early look at the recruiting board. We got Andy Harvey in the lead here, two-star guard, and then Andy Black, a four-star cornerback. Trying to scrap for Earl Henry as well, so that's two Colorado guys and one Kansas player. Check out these next four guys here, Brendan, Jerome, Brian, and Aaron, all high 70 players, and we're knocking at the door. But this Canarado rule is tough. It wasn't all red before the season. As you can see, some five stars and other high-end players were not able to scout because they're not in Kansas or Colorado. By the end of year one, it's important we establish that pipeline state from Colorado. Those pipeline bonuses will help us replenish the troops because as you see, Colorado, Baylor, Arizona, KU, Oklahoma State, UCF, and Iowa State, pretty much everyone on our side of it has a better overall than us. Now, because I'm curious, I'm gonna look at the other division and it is a similar story. We are the lowest overall in the Big 12. Regardless, week two is getting simmed and we pull it off by three points. This garbage is gonna put us behind the eight ball fast. We're losing out on big prospects because we don't have kitchen sink, that coaching ability to get more than 500 points. And Bob Dixon's really gonna do us like that, flirting with the enemy? I've got my eye on you. 2-0 early in this one. Not sure how long the streak will continue, but at least we'll get to 3-0 against Georgia Southern. Bro, are you kidding me right now? If it couldn't get any worse, Avery Johnson's already on the IR with a torn pectoral. Suddenly between that and losing guys to Ohio State and Oklahoma, it's going to be a hard rebuild. Might need to get guys like Andy Black, Brendan Graham, and Earl Henry a visit ASAP before they get sold the Ohio State Kool-Aid. Number six in the nation after a perfect slate through non-conference. Really counting on the boys to wow the prospects that visit this week. So let's go ahead and sim it and find out what happens. And there goes the perfect season. Good news is we did enough for Brendan Graham and Earl Henry to say, hey, I'm ready to become a K-State Wildcat. On the road again against Baylor, and wow, we hand Baylor a decisive loss, 34-10. Is Avery Johnson back yet? <clears throat> and some of the bigger pieces are starting to fall, Aaron Anderson and Jerome Turner. And some of the bigger pieces starting to fall here, Aaron Anderson, Jerome Turner committing to Oklahoma and Ohio State respectively. So uh, we're going to have to refigure out how to target and succeed and win these recruiting battles. In that last win, Oakley was the leading receiver. And check out Kennesaw State receivers, man. Moss, 26 yards. Bohannon, 9 yards. Wallace, 6. Let's keep the roadshow going with UCF. And we squeak it out by 3 points. So we may be one of the lower overall teams. But we are flying high right now. Three games in a row on the road. It's West Virginia. Let's sim it and figure out who comes out on top. And uh-oh, it looks like Virginia spoiled us here with a last second, last quarter dub. After the overtime loss to Iowa State 20-17, to we've gone on a little three-week win streak beating primetime in Colorado. Then we knock off TCU by four and recently demolish Arizona by three touchdowns. And yes, I know I only have five more games to jump into, but I believe the Sunflower Showdown is essential if I wanna keep the Sunflower Shutdown Challenge intact. And let me tell you, the Sunflower Showdown is such a fun atmosphere. It doesn't get as much limelight as some of the big nationwide rivalry games, but trust me, it's one you don't wanna miss. In real talk, man, KU has been on the come up, so I gotta give credit where credit's due. Not gonna lie, it's been actually kinda wild to see this team come up the way that they have as Bean, with authority, tosses the dude aside and says, I'm getting six. Unfortunate series of events gives the Jayhawks here another opportunity, and hopefully we can get the stop, and we do, fourth down. 
Here we go, fourth down. They're going for it. It's a fake. And yeah, the hole was just wide open up the middle. It's almost like I jumped in and I'm hurting the cause rather than helping it. Thankfully, we get the goal line stand. All hands on deck for these final eight seconds. Why not let it fly to Moss, who's got a step. He's burnt. Kobe Bryant. Christian Moss, the Kennesaw State receiver, burnt Kobe Bryant, giving us a chance to cash in with three before half. That is a big, big win. Now we just got to trust the defense to do what the defense is is Ben doing a top-notch unit and there we go fourth and six and you blink you miss it that was a quick strike from the Jayhawks and we're running low on time and hope it's time to start getting vertical stretching this defense picking it apart as we just lob one up and over to Oakley big touchdown for the big man we're right back in it only down by 10 points KU's offense on the come up, so we need to hold it down right here, right now. Third and one, they're going up the middle, and he just runs right through us. Austin Moore gets shrugged off. And you definitely knew what happened next when they got that close to the end zone. Literally have to score three times with four and a half minutes to go. We're gonna have to take anything we can get. As of right this second, it feels like so much for the Sunflower shutdown, even though Bohannon had six in his hands. Start concocting punishments in the comment section. And I'll start looking at them. GG, KU does us dirty. I thought we could try to shut them out this entire rebuild, but that was already disproven in the first year. Jayhawks come into Bill Snyder Family Stadium and to everyone's displeased here in the stands, minus the Jayhawk fans. The whole reason I jumped into this game was to prevent this kind of outcome. Bowl season, such a great time of year. We're gonna go ahead and sim how we hang with the Hawkeyes. Do we come out on top? We do, 20 to seven, that is a W. Around the conference, the Jayhawks got to play the West Virginia Mountaineers for the title game. I'm sorry, they gotta play Texas Tech. Nonetheless, Jayhawks won the Big 12 in year one. And for the national championship game, Oklahoma, fresh into the SEC, gets to take on a perfect Florida State unit. And there you have it, folks. Oklahoma Sooners are national champions in year one. End of year one recruiting, we need DBs, so it's time we go all in on Andy Black. We're only down by a thousand points, 6,500 NIL dollars wired right to your account if you accept. We snag the guys we wanted to snag. Just a light 43rd ranked class here. Honestly, we hit some roadblocks early in the recruiting journey and those got to be alleviated in this next season. Off season training went well for guys like Austin Moore, ready to leave it on the field in their final season. DJ Giddens up into the 90 threshold too. Wacky fact I just learned about our true freshman punter Lawrence Johnson 93 speed 91 excel guys like Andy Black already hopping in making an immediate difference as a true freshman starting in the depth chart the list of prospects grows as the season goes on and in preseason though we see some solid options here out of Kansas definitely can say just as much for Colorado as they got a host of four and three star guys to add to the board Chad Ray now that is a name and a 79 overall tackle we want him Canarado represent found us some weapons that Avery Johnson will make quick use of Paul Bryant would be one of those guys six foot four tight end 80 overall well we got a special neutral site game here it's a Texas kickoff in week one against Tennessee so you got Tennessee and Kansas State for a Texas kickoff game it reminds me when K-State played Stanford at AT&T Stadium however this one is at NRG Stadium NRG I guess you could say. Unless everyone plays out of their mind in year two, this is not the national championship team. A very good team, no doubt, but it's going to take some special recruits and youth movement to get us to that next step. And I mentioned youth movement. We got some key seniors graduating this year like Austin Moore, so we're going to have to ball out and make and tosh what's good. And oh man, Nico, what are you doing on your first pass? You just throw one in the danger zone. Not gonna lie, it's the little details that get me excited for EA College Football 25. Like, I wanna see his luscious locks out there. Let's be real, wear and tear is gonna be a big deal in the next year's edition of college football. So we gotta watch out for the big blows as Jace Brown, touchdown, Kansas State, up 
6-0. As we get back on defense, I'm still wrapping up my Wabash Cannonball from that big touchdown, and we're going to have to dial it up today if we want to beat the Volunteers. It would be a big win. Offense and defense need to get clicking, and look at Jace Brown, man. Now that we're not restricted to Kennesaw State, he just feels more explosive. Avery Johnson sure likes throwing to him, and he's going to enjoy throwing to Oakley throughout his career because Oakley's only a sophomore. We're going to need to speed up the K-State rebuild because I want to win a national championship with Avery Johnson at the helm and talk about a dime under immense pressure. Jace Brown, wow, I'm blushing out here. That was really impressive. I'm not gonna lie, got the flick off. Jace Brown got separation. Locked in his black here, the freshman DB gets to the play. Welcome to college football. Nothing like playing in a high school football game only nine months ago to now playing against the Volunteers. I think revamped has Avery at like 82 speed, but from the coach climbing in real life, he said Avery Johnson's like the fastest guy in the roster. So EA better get him right with probably what, 92 speed? That's that's fair. And then imagine running the option with a 92 speed quarterback. Oof, my mouth is literally watering just thinking about it. So K-State is definitely a contender of mine to rebuild when the game comes out right away. It is my alma mater, my cats, the school I went to, big touchdown Oakley up by three and man yeah i just can't wait to get my hands on the game and play with the cats realistically though this is probably not going to be my first rebuild as i kind of want you all to determine who i play first i got 12 seconds but all three timeouts so i'm not afraid to go across the middle exactly like i did here to oakley big man rumbling 35 tracking him down he breaks free one second left timeout and we call it in the nick of time. It's first and goal. I'm at least gonna line up here. I might not snap it if I don't like the look, but hey, with the read option here, that is not a bad look. I'm gonna call it, and we're gonna keep it. Avery Johnson's gonna get stopped short. Darn it, no points, but a encouraging first half of football. Did not expect to shut out Tennessee in the first half, and they're rumbling now, second half football. Now it's second and goal, looking to cover our zone as White slips right on through the cracks. It's Squirrel, and he's in to the end zone. Third and two past midfield. It looks like we got an open receiver deep on the street. Can we connect? No, it is underthrown, and Turrentine is intercepting that ball. Dude, what is going on right now? He has so many options and finds Thornton Jr. for six. That was extremely fast. Bro, I'm officially sweating right now. Ain't no way we give up a 21-0 lead out here and now it's all tied up ain't no way man what happened to this game and avery johnson turns it over at the worst time are you serious all the turnovers everything sky is falling right now down by three it's important we shake off the worst fourth quarter we've been having because yeah this quite literally here with a minute left is the game on the line giddens up the middle first down feels like just a moment ago we were up in this game by a lot and now we're fighting back for our lives we don't want to just settle for three either we're looking to go for the win as moss steps it up gets us to the 25 still got an owl receiver up in here making a play but he is a little bit further in the depth chart in front of him are some young receivers just like this man spivey the red shirt freshman i believe coming up huge with 10 seconds i decide to call a timeout. i'm gonna do a fullback dive so we can just get a few more nope timeout on third and two got the blockers lined up to head right we're gonna stretch it to the right giddens is gonna get stopped i think i found my play here with 10 seconds on the game clock left we got everyone coming in towards the middle so i believe someone will spring open and across the middle we go intercepted what in the world we lose in a heartbreaking fashion we had the lead and somehow that went through our receiver's hands because i guarantee you that defender was not in front of him i refuse to believe that outcome man i have to see a replay of that what is this animation him sitting there and our receiver just gliding into him that led to an interception yeah that's confusing as much as i want to cope about that last play we had a lot of chances to not let them back in the game and we turned it over too much in the fourth quarter still working hard at bringing in chad ray alton johnson and brandon smith they should be within reach however the battle for the recruit is moving fast as you can tell orange bars in week three going up against utsa i think we should have that one in the bag and we do 34 to 3 good outcome and there we go some of the guys we just mentioned ready to visit so let's bring them into manhattan gonna go ahead and give the royal 
royal treatment to a lot of our guys here in week four against Auburn. This would have been a fun one to jump in, but we are low on the amount of games we have left to play and participate in. However, K-State defends the bill in a big way, 37 to 17. Player of the game goes to DJ Giddens, 149 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, whereas Avery Johnson had 340 yards in the air. And yeah, when you beat Auburn at home, you're gonna wow some guys. And that's exactly what Paul Bryant, Alton Johnson, Brandon Smith and John Spence saw, and they saw enough. We're coming to Manhattan. From one test right to the next, another home game against another really good team, sixth ranked West Virginia. Two and one through non-conference and only losing to the heartbreaking game against Tennessee. It's a really good start for the Cats. And let's see if they can keep the good times rolling. West Virginia beats us by one point in the fourth quarter. It was a touchdown pass from Green to Taylor. At least two more recruits come out of it from Canarado, Andre Johnson, and Michael Gaither. Look at this storyline. Stufflebean is awarded Player of the Week for his efforts in Big 12 opener. Stufflebean. I'm going to keep it 1,000. Cody Stufflebean is a player I'm not familiar with on K-State's roster, but he had a day eight tackles, a sack, three TFLs, two fumble recoveries, but it wasn't enough at the end of the game. And so we're going to take on Arizona State and win in decisive fashion, just getting out some revenge. What is up with the amount of ranked teams we're playing so far this year? Colorado is also a top five team. Hoping for better results than the West Virginia game. Colorado is a perfect five and oh, will we be the ones to spoil their season? and another heartbreaking defeat by three points in this one. At three and three, year two, the rebuilds quickly become a what could have been type season, barely losing all three of our losses. We really could be six and oh right now, because as you can see, beating teams like UCF, we get the offense going from time to time is just holding on for the dub. Trudging right along to week 12, we're five and four, and here it is, the Sunflower Showdown. KU up to 91 overall, 95 offense. Can we hold on to the Sunflower Showdown? In this one, we do. So we beat a top 10 Jayhawk team. Thankfully, Oklahoma stumbled way back in week six, and we're battling it out still for Chad Ray. Just as much as we're hanging around with Jonathan Montgomery, this DB would be another bright addition to the secondary. As we take on Baylor and squeak it out 40 to 37. With Chad Ray in town, 49 points. Yes, please. Was that enough to convince Chad to the purple side of town? in Manhattan. Let's find out. Yes, we snag a host of guys. We really got KU out here competing for another Big 12 championship game. They're playing West Virginia this time. And will they win it this year as well? No. West Virginia wins 38-34. What a game. Ain't no way. We're back to the Pop-Tarts Bowl in year two. Eight and four on the season. 14th in the nation going against eight and four Florida State. You know what's better than one Pop-Tart trophy? It's two. So let's go ahead and see how the Cats do in the Pop-Tart Bowl against big old Florida State. And oh baby, 56 points. Cats go nine and four and put a whooping on Florida State. That is what we like to see. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're kidding, right? Avery Johnson, seven touchdowns in the Pop-Tart Bowl. Man lives and breathes Pop-Tart Bowl football. National championship game. Now this is surprising. Not the Ohio State part, but a perfect Memphis on the season. They're the one seed in the nation. Can they get it done? And no, unfortunately for the Memphis Tigers, their perfect season is spoiled. The Ohio State wins the national championship. And so if we can't win the Natty, man, I guess I'm a happy camper with a Pop-Tart Bowl victory. We got two of those suckers. Tack on 37 touchdown passes. Avery was slinging it. Graduation day, losing a handful of good seniors, including Austin Moore, who was a key piece. And then, oh no, not our Cody Stufflebean. Let's go ahead and throw all 11,500 points remaining on Jonathan Montgomery probably our last best recruit on the board. We got him and four other four stars with him, and that brings us to the 19th best recruiting class in the nation. Let's go. Training results are in. DJ Giddens, welcome to the 99 club in your senior redshirt season. Avery Johnson, 94 overall. My goodness. Get ready for another spectacular season. A few more 90s rounding out the list and high 80s across the board. Good mix of young and new guys on the roster. However, we're going to have to chop some people. New season, new recruits at the Canarado border, and we got some good ones. A lot of four stars and three stars here in Colorado. And no way Jay Bell would go crazy crazy here at K-State, the second best player in all of the nation from Fort Riley, North Kansas, 80 overall receiver. We're scouting him out and we're going to bring him in. For those that don't know, Fort Riley is literally like 
15, 20 minutes from campus. Let's scout him out. And yeah, only minus one, no big deal. He's still the second best receiver in the nation for a reason. So why go to South Carolina when you can go up 20 minutes up the road, keep the whole family in town and go to K-State? And okay, Ronnie Boyd, a 77 overall, 89 speed, 86 route running, 81 catching, a really solid dude that would pair well at a gun barrel Colorado. Start of year three is here and oh my goodness, 95 overall, 97 offense, 92 defense. Your K State Wildcats, baby. Yet they predict Colorado and KU ahead of them. They do look like solid units, but our team is just a bit better. Arizona Loki looks loaded as well. Same overall points except a plus one on defense. Forget it. In fact, the whole Big 12 look at 90s across the board except for UCF and Iowa State. Heisman watch. It's a big season for Jalen Daniels. And how is Ollie Gordon still around in this sim? Regardless, we're back to the board looking for more can arrive gems to bring into Manhattan. We have a few options and I think we're going to start offering some scholarships. So off the rip, you already know we're maxing out Jay Bell and giving him a scholarship. Travis Smith is a four-star offensive tackle at 76 overall. Sort of related to Justin Jefferson. Okay, not really, but Jeremiah Jefferson, a four-star defensive end. Looks good. Looks like gems do exist in Colorado. From Rifle, we have Matt Gould, a DB. Sean Freeman, six foot five from Colorado. The athlete has an interesting skill set here. 77 speed, 89 throw power, but he also has 87 play rec, 84 zone coverage. Hmm, maybe he's a good safety too. Well, shoot, this is a problem we haven't encountered yet in the young rebuild. More players than points. Year three just might be a big year for the Cats and they're taking UTSA and the Roadrunners up first. Just gonna straight up simulate this one. And yeah, 49 to 10, the boys came out cooking. Start the Heisman champ, folks, because Avery Johnson threw for six touchdown passes on 18 completions for 298 yards. Oh my goodness. Can the boys keep up that type of momentum and throw down another 49 piece against the Raging Cajuns? Three top-notch guys, Sean Freeman, Travis Smith, and Matt Gould ready to visit. Diving into that Raging Cajun game, man, Avery Johnson, a Another very good line. And as Big 12 Conference play starts, let's keep an eye on the Cats. They're off to a rapid start. And at the top of this list, though, arch nemesis KU in third. At 81 overall, they really haven't managed to turn it around or rebuild, have they? So taking it through to the next week, we have a decisive 41-point victory. Matt Gould says, Wildcat Nation, let's ride. Can't get out of the comfort zone, but North Texas is another one of them teams like Arizona State. And that's four straight weeks with 40 plus points. Big boy Travis Smith is in. And come on now, is Avery Johnson in the Heisman watch or what? Four straight dominant performances. There he is. That was five touchdowns in the last game. Let's keep working our way up the board. Big week for the Cats, because at the bye week, they jump up to fifth ranked. Now we're taking on BYU. Let's go toe for toe. And sheesh, man, 52 points. BYU stood no chance. I'm impressed. I really am. In year three, the Cats are on fire. And it's a win-win as Ronnie Boyd, Jason Ransom are also coming to K-State. This is a big one, however. Colorado is 25th in the nation, 93 overall. This won't be easy. Not going to jump in quite yet, so let's see if we can hang in there against the buffs. And what do we do? 55 points against prime time. 670 yards of total offense. And let me guess, yes, Avery Johnson had an all-world day. 423 yards and four touchdown passes. Jay Bell from Fort Riley has bought into the hype and we have the number two player in all of the nation, five-star receiver coming downtown to Manhattan. UCF two and four on the season. Honestly, the way we've been rolling, that really shouldn't give us too much of a fit, but you never know any week, anything can happen in the Big 12. And thank goodness they hold on by a touchdown. The slate of tough Big 12 opponents continues with Oklahoma State. It's not going to get easier with the Cowboys. And this is a bummer update to talk about here. Chad Ray, our true freshman right tackle from Cherry Hills is gone broken ribs he won't be coming back this year he was doing a good job protecting avery johnson so let's just hope the next man up mentality is there as the game against oklahoma state goes in way of kansas 
State in overtime. What a win. Fairly even in total offense. This game had me sweating. As you can see, Avery Johnson, four touchdown passes, did what he had to do. However, player of the game for Oklahoma State, Ollie Gordon, cooked 190 yards, three touchdowns. And as we advance to the next week, we pull it off 35 to 14. It looked like Arizona only had four wins. Momentum must not have been on their side, even though they had a really good team. Well, if there's ever a good time to jump into the game, it's now number one, Kansas State versus number three KU in the Sunflower Showdown. We can't let them embarrass us like they did a couple of years ago. Time to see what the hype's all about as Avery Johnson's leading the number one offense in the nation. No pressure, just a few four stars coming to visit this game too. This is going to make for one of the most high-flying Sunflower Showdowns, I believe, in Kansas State KU history. Definitely in our favor to have it here at the Bill, so the home field advantage is a nice touch in the showdown. We'll take any advantage we can get when it's a number three KU. Let the game begin here on defense. A blitz just seeks right on through the offensive line, taking Daniels down. Guess who? None other than our year one recruit, Andy Black. Forcing the Jayhawks to a third and six. And wow, he fit that right through the window. Jayhawks have kept the drive alive on the last two third down attempts. And they're going to do it again. Who was on that man? Nonetheless, we'll take a fourth down and see if we can stop them at the gate and we do huge turnover here in danger zone they had it in the red zone nothing going big time play from the defense for a nine in oh kansas state team dj giddens down the sideline that's a nice 13 yard touch a lot of great options here across the board. Why not throw it right back to good old friend Oakley? Now we get our first look at number 89, Bryant, who we picked off the recruiting portal last year, the stud 80 overall freshman tight end. A little bit of PTSD, but I'm running the play that led into an interception here in the Tennessee game, and that's not going to happen this time. Spivey, touchdown. Third and seven for Jalen Daniels. Will he convert? We get the stop fourth and four cats are going to get off the field just a really well-rounded unit out here even guys like bryant new to the team stepping in if the team can't get it done this year well that's going to be unfortunate and the fumble's just as unfortunate huge play from ku there they had a great chance to get some points but they don't convert for avery coughed it up i was just going to mention that we got three top end receivers coming into manhattan and look at jace brown get separation if they can all come in and play like jace brown has then i'm a happy camper past midfield avery johnson hungry for more and he got hit and still delivered a dime to oakley time to start the heisman chant now and next thing you know we're into the red zone and dj giddens is toting the rock gonna go right on back to the option avery johnson this time keeping it making a move spinning falling forward just a yard short and we're at the one we might as well just hand it off do the easy work and made the easy work look hard there we still get a touchdown joe ku in danger of another fourth down here will they get any points whatsoever how did that just slide looks like ku is literally about to score here and that is no bueno so far so good it's only 30 seconds left and we've been doing an efficient job with the ball in our hands get in another first to me it feels like ku is a little lost right now in the sauce as we're just dotting our guys up one thing has led to another we got a wide open man it's jace brown touchdown even better we get the ball in the second half so why not rub it in we'll come knocking again for the second time giving it off to Bryant the young gun touchdown are you kidding me Avery Johnson what the heck was that getting slammed still managed to find it to Bryant the true freshman man he had some get up on him hate to be the bearer of bad news Jayhawk fans oh wait no I don't hate it uh you guys are done for that's why in the red zone with still three minutes to go we're passing and we're gonna go to get ins and he's just gonna run away from the rest that's a touchdown make it four touchdown passes today from Avery Johnson 289 yards a decisive game in the sunflower showdown and that's 38 touchdowns a school record which he broke last year's record so this man's already a k-state legend hands down when it was all said and done the smoke clears its victory formation 41 21 k-state wildcats to top it off we bring in a haul including justin burnett kicker of the future up next is the baylor bears they have six wins which is surprising given they're at 91 overall would expect a bit better of a year for them however the simulation says not going to happen on our watch. Oh, goodness. Farmageddon to end off the regular season. 25th ranked Iowa State. This ain't going to be easy either. So fingers crossed we can end the season perfect against Iowa State. And yes, we do. So perfect 12-0. 
continuing to hold on to that one seed. Just great stuff again from Avery Johnson. Six touchdown passes, 370 yards, 91% completion. That's got to be Heisman, right? Joe Barrow, not Joe Burrow. We got our very own Joe Barrow coming to Manhattan. Massive showdown here in the Big 12 championship game. Texas Tech Red Raiders. We're going to jump in and sim this one from the field. And here we go, Big 12 Championship Football jumping into the simulation here. Live commentary up to a quick 7-0 start. Second quarter is upon us. Well, the Cats keep it rolling. Boom, touchdown again. But Red Raiders don't count them out. Yeah, with a turnover there. And wow, another turnover at the goal line. I was going to say, Raiders got a fast-tempo team, but right now they're struggling on offense. But hold on, they're coming back. One possession at a time as it's crunch time. It's a four-point game. Anything can go except for that big insurance touchdown by the Cats is going to help them in a big way. But wait, look at Tech. Quick score. Going to have to try to burn some clock here, but it looks like the Raiders are going to get the ball back with 50 seconds left. Second down. Third down. Let's watch it. They're back at their own two. Will the Raiders come out of this unfortunate position here and walk away with a chance at the win? Well, that first down is one step closer. Red Raiders all out of timeouts, but they got one of the quickest tempos in the nation. So I'm not too concerned about how much time they'll chew or save, but defense for K-State needs to step up. Definitely put the Red Raiders back on their heels here as they got to do anything. And wow, that was almost intercepted and sealed. Would have been signed, sealed, and delivered if the K-State defender just could lurk it. But fourth and four still can sign, sealed, and deliver this thing if they get the stop. And they do. K-State makes the huge stand here in this close Big 12 battle. And that's all that matters. Got the win, 13-0. Let's go to playoffs. As if year three could not get any better, Avery Johnson is your Heisman winner. Bro, ain't no way the storyline cooked up like this. In the national championship game, we're taking on the Tennessee Volunteers, man. Like the script writers were on one. You may be wondering what I'm going on about. Well, if you just flash back to last season, we played Tennessee in week one and they beat us in that neutral site game where we were up. 21-0. We'll spring open and across the middle we go. Intercepted. Now we get a chance at sweet, sweet revenge, but only the biggest stage. Let's get it on K-State, Tennessee, national championship battle. We're here a little above schedule in my opinion, but you know what? The more I think about it, the more I realize in some of my other rebuilds, K-State usually builds into a good team over time in NCAA 14. Like low key, I've seen them get here in a couple different rebuilds. And so I didn't have to do much micromanaging for this to happen. But enough with that soft stuff, man. Tennessee all over us the first couple plays of the game. Let's just hit a slant to Jace Brown, get Avery Johnson working. But sure, I won't be as aggressive as Coach Phillip Rivers for the Salona Beach sponges always going for it on fourth down. It's the championship game. I'll play it respectfully. Third and six for the volunteers that's a huge sack guess who it's black again man he is a machine andy has been producing since the moment he stepped on campus i love that guy second and 14 we just got to make sure we don't take a safety up in here so we're gonna go across the middle and bro that angle pov everything was garbage that pick was really hard to predict no excuses though we just got to do better plain and simple so that's what we're gonna do here with the defense and we get it right back senior parish big play Come on now, playmakers step up on the biggest stage. Forced to deal with this incredible angle once more. Let's go quick to get in, thankfully get some room. So I guess if we can get the national championship here in three years, what does it mean for the five-year rebuild? Ain't gonna lie, I didn't think that far ahead. Like what happens if I win it earlier than the five-year window? Because look at that, Heisman Johnson making plays that Heisman make. Let's focus on the task at hand. I mean, Tennessee is gonna give us a fight all game long. Winding down the final moment, of the first quarter just want to make a good impression for the rest of the game fourth and goal read option of course going to give up the middle to dj giddens could not get there oh no we're turning it over and coming away with no points i thought we had that one all right somehow it's zero zero in the championship game but not for long with that quick strike to oakley Avery johnson literally going down as the best quarterback in kansas state history right now and he still has another season let's keep the good times rolling out here as we're just gonna lob one up in anticipation for davis first and goal let's go ahead and try the read option again but this time i want to get it right dj giddens thank you much easier tennessee making quick work of us here on this drive and selden has been just running through everyone so of course course we're gonna stack the box because we can't seem to find a solution for Selden maybe that'll do third and two here we go again more pressure and web just open I'll tell you what we're not doing we're not winning this game right now we have to be better 
Bro, come on. We got to come back and win this thing. So let's score this drive. Let's keep this drive alive and get some points here. It's Bryant, the freshman, shedding his way all the way into the end zone. He was not to be denied. What a stage for the true freshie, man. When you were a freshman in college, were you scoring big sixes in the national championship game? You smell that? That's a comeback brewing. If we can just get the stop here, go to fourth down, we can. Hey, 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 let's go state. Fourth quarter, we got a big one to get back into here. Handed enough to get in. He's got some space. Oof, he was a shoestring string tackle away from taking off through the air curl flat we got jace brown we'll go find him anywhere any place once the heisman gets hot it's hard to cool him off so you better do what you can from a defensive perspective i don't think you'll understand how badly i want revenge after that other game we lost to tennessee because trust me i want it bad and so does dj giddens first and goal i want to check the boxes saying i could do a national championship as well as a pop tart bowl in the same rebuild here we go, second and goal. Got Tennessee's defense shifting out on us, and I think a quick slant to Moss. Touchdown, one-handed snag. The last standing Kennesaw State receiver still kicking it. He doesn't play much, but when he does, I guess he makes big plays like that. It's all tied up. I'm gonna show the blitz because we are blitzing, so might as well bring the house as McIntosh. Oh my goodness, what an interception at a pivotal time. I better start hitting the Wabash Cannonball because that was wild. Let's keep the good times going. DJ Giddens, spin move, and six. I might as well keep Wabash Cannonballing. Can't stop, won't stop. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Oh, how the turntables have turned, I guess you could say, as black. The DB specialist is insane. Literally got Tennessee punting out here with only two minutes left in the game. They're gonna try to hope in their defense to stop the Heisman. Not the smartest thing you could do, but I respect it because yeah, you're pinned back. You don't wanna cough it up in our own red zone. So uh, one way or another, we're gonna get you. I just wanna stop and call out a full circle moment here. We gave up 21 unanswered points to Tennessee in that last year's game. Now we've scored 21 unanswered. What a way, man, to go out for some of the seniors like Giddens. It's officially official. K-State, Avery Johnson, and the Wildcats are national champs, and we've done it. Conquered everyone in our path this year was insanely impressive in a couple OT thrillers in the regular season to get us to this point. But at the end of the day, a win was a win. We got 14 of them suckers, and here we go. Let the celebration begin. Tennessee, it's sweet, sweet revenge for us, and you guys got to go home and take second place this year. At least you got your neutral site victory from last season to hang your hat on, right? Here we go. K-State okay, holding up the trophy. We're champs of the world. And we still have two years left at this rebuild. 94, 94, 14 and 0, three spectacular years. And honestly, I kind of feel bad. I feel like we recruited some real talented players that we won't even get to see develop. So what I'm gonna do is sim this last season. I'm not gonna jump in. We're just gonna see how Avery Johnson does in his last year. Sent some dudes to the league, including a first round pick for DJ Giddens. After three years of development and playing for the Kansas State Wildcats, Kennesaw State receiver Christian Moss is actually a sixth round pick. On paper, it's scary. The team looks even better this year than they did last year. There's more 90s. Into the regular season, we're ranked third. I don't know how you win a natty and are not number one again for the next season, but hey, yeah, this team is certified cracked with a 99 overall offense. All we did was push them to another level of excellence. So essentially, this is bonus content. We're gonna see how they do according to the simulation in this last season, kicking it off 52 to three against an FCS opponent. Up to number two, it's Duke week, and we deliver a close victory, 38-35. Going up against GSU, December. Decisive 31 6, 3 0 through non conference. Big 12 play is here, 41 0 shutout to kick off in the Big 12 conference. Now for BYU, we have a 35 23 performance, quickly up to 5 0. Bring on Ralphie, the buffs, prime time. We want all that smoke, and I guess we did not. So we lose to CU. Lots well, unfortunate, knocking us down to number eight in the nation. And we lose back to back. So when it rains, it pours. UCF takes us out too. Now up to two losses. I feel like college football playoffs are a bit out of reach. And <laughs> make it another loss. Three in a row. Oklahoma State beats us by four. So, so many heartbreaking close games. Not sure what is going on for the guys. Thankfully, this one is a close game in our favor, 41-38. Talk about a fall from grace. KU, one and eight, down to 79 overall. They were elite just the last couple of years. And so that's unfortunate to see for them. But for Kansas State, we 
will take advantage 49 14 last couple games of the season it's number seven baylor and we handle them 37 21 still proving this team is very talented farmageddon in manhattan iowa state has traveled in let's give them a show and take them down 41 to 26 regular season complete we didn't make the big 12 championship game however we get the texas tax act bowl against the florida gators avery johnson came out on top the number one passer in the league this year so uh, expected good things from avery and we got him 36 touchdowns to six ends very solid as jace brown won the blitnikoff 17 touchdown catches but for now let's see how avery johnson the mvp of this rebuild finishes off his career here against the gators going ahead and jumping in 42 21 it was decisive and then why the heck not let's see how the national championship game played out ended up going in penn state's favor 23 20 i'm excited to soak up the season with my alma mater so i hope you enjoyed the rebuild i had a joy bringing it to y'all so if you soaked it up make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and i'll catch y'all in the next ea college football 25 is right around the corner so strap in because tons of heat is on deck